but one in four American adults has a criminal record of some kind. One thing that we know is that corrections also has a very high recidivism rate as it relates to departments of corrections as well as counties. Our job is to implement as much educational programming as possible in order to reduce recidivism because we know that education alone is the greatest determining factor to reducing that number. So about 95 to 97 percent of the individuals that are incarcerated are going to come home. The question is how do I want them to come home? Do I want them to be contributing taxpayers and helping to be part of the solution or do I want them to just be better criminals when they come home? So yes, we can say no TV, no education and all of that, but all you're going to do is cage someone and teach them to be a better criminal. That's not going to increase my public safety and it's not going to create the kind of community that I want. I think sometimes it, it could be a common misconception that providing education while to people who are incarcerated could be terribly expensive. I don't think that's necessarily the case at all. With very strategic use of the tools that are available, such as the tablets, an awful lot can be accomplished at a reasonable expense. And when you factor in the, the recidivism rate in our state, it's about $32,000 per year to have someone locked up, providing an educational resource that could keep them from returning to prison really pays off to, for all of us. Every 100 guys that we keep from coming back in saves the state $3 million. That's real cash. I say real cash is and real cash to taxpayers. We should be looking at making that initial investment in bettering the education and workforce development skills of every inmate because we know that it, we're going to reduce our costs on the back end because hopefully we'll never see them again in the correctional setting. Education can offer an inmate so many different things. One, it offers them the ability to unlearn learned behaviors. And so certain behavior patterns that necessarily was not the best uh, leading up to getting in, it helps them to unlearn learned behaviors, to break generational curses that may transcend within that, that person's family, transcends within themselves. It also helps one to become free, free mentally to be able to grow, to be able to empower, ability to be able to educate and enrich other people's lives. The education offers the opportunity for an inmate to be able to progress and move forward towards he or she's dreams, goals, and vision. The role that education plays in reducing recidivism is a very important role. It is very well documented by the RAND Corporation that for every dollar spent on inmate education, it reduces four to five dollars down the line through reduced recidivism costs. There are also studies that state that, you know, when you look at recidivism, you're looking somewhere around 60 to 70 percent within five years if you look at that data. If you look at three years, it's somewhere around 40 to 50 percent. If someone receives an associate's degree, it falls down to somewhere around 16 percent. Someone gets a bachelor's degree, it falls to about 6 percent. Someone gets a master's degree, it's not even statistically significant enough to count as 1 percent. So it's proven that education has a direct impact on reducing recidivism. I think the ability to use 21st century technology like tablets really helps jumpstart that reentry process. If an inmate has never dealt with current technology, they only see it on television or in the movies, but they've never actually dealt with it, it's a lot to cope with on reentry because the reality is so much of what they're going to be facing on this side of the fence is dealing with technology. So to be able to have them working with the tablets and getting pertinent and valuable education through the use of the tablets is just monumentally beneficial. Yes, I enjoyed the tablets. I did use the tablets while I was incarcerated. It was very helpful. The educational form that was uploaded on the tablets were very educational, you know, very informative, very helpful. Altogether, I was incarcerated 10 years. As time progressed and we had people like Ms. Karen and volunteers come in and bring the tablets in, we were able to get up-to-date knowledge and we were able to get more of the type of information that we were seeking in a more detailed expression. So instead of them handing us a textbook that's falling apart and you could barely read the pages, we were able to, you know, pull out our tablet and able to sit there and really take in what we're reading. And not just that, you could go back, you were able to save, you were able to clip on what you wanted to and 
kind of personalize it and make it your own instead of just, you know, reading somebody else's highlights. And definitely with the, with the tablets, I would say, you know, it provided more information, more current knowledge, and you were able to personalize it to your own wants and needs and what you were seeking to look for, as opposed to just a cut and dry 300 page textbook. As it relates to education, we are also moving into new realms of virtual reality and augmented reality to basically um, give inmates a, a view or an idea of situations or experiences that they may have on the outside. Maybe we can show you what your reentry center is going to look like prior to you being released, and then maybe that will help you adjust just a bit more quickly to normal life post-release. I am very hopeful that more prison systems across the country will start looking very seriously and begin to see the wisdom in implementing education solutions in their prison systems. I've, I've seen that trend beginning and that's very exciting because the fact is education is really one of the only proven reducers of recidivism. Um, it just makes a huge difference and as people become better educated they'll they're, they're empowered to make better decisions and better choices and that's what that's what we all need to do. We offer hardware which could be tablets we offer software which could allow certain administrators to transfer information to and from students in a secure fashion via our learning management system and then thirdly we offer content. We have over 65,000 titles available that we retrieve from the country and the world's largest publishers. Where do I see it going in five to ten years? I see everybody having, in my mind, a GTL tablet to do their continuing education. We'll be the first company in corrections to not only service inmates, but to service correctional officer academies, to service full-time staff, to service probation and parole, to service juvenile justice, and also to service prison industries. Technology allows us to do that.